Hi everybody. Well, summer is here and we are due a heat wave and already these things have started to fill the shelves of all the stores because they're expecting a rush to buy them and this is the one I've got. The main problem with this thing is when I turn it on to keep cool it sounds like I'm sitting with a jet engine. It makes such a lot of noise and it's not that efficient and of course courtesy of our news media and the splash that we've had there is awareness of this. It is the MIT toroidal propeller that everybody's been going on about. Now, so the rumour is that these operate around about 1 to 5 hertz and that's outside human hearing so you can't hear them. And they're supposed to be very much more efficient because they reduce the vortices that are created at the tip. Now it wasn't MIT that developed this. The first patent for a toroidal propeller was in fact in 1890 by a guy called Charles Mayer. It was used as a propeller on steamboats and a Frenchman Joseph Ganio and a Spaniard Jose Fola also painted toroidal propellers and these were being used in the 1900. In the 1930s Friedrich Honekampf painted a toroidal fan and in the 1930s René Louise Mallet painted a toroidal propeller for aircraft. In the 1960s the toroidal propeller for a marine application was repainted by an Australian David B. Sugden. In fact this design of propeller has appeared in something like 150 patents up until 2022. In 2013 Sharo Marine applied for a patent with the claim that this was more efficient reducing fuel consumption and much quieter and the fuel consumption reduction was more noticeable in the marine environment because it was going through water. It was in 2017 that MIT brought this up to date and applied for a patent in 2020 and that was granted in 2022. So it's far from new hey, it's been around for a very long time and the main claims are quietness and efficiency, reduction in fuel spent to make it spin. The main difference between that and a normal propeller is the air vortices are created across the whole length of it, not just at the tip. And it's the tip that creates the noise and the inefficiency, which is why this is supposed to be that much more efficient. They found a new application, I would say, in drones, and drones are able to operate now in that range of 1 to 5 hertz so that you just don't hear them. Because it was used as a fan, as we said, in the 1930s, and it immediately makes you think, with the upcoming heat wave, how could we do if we turn that into a fan? And probably the reason you didn't see many of these was because they're actually quite hard to make and of course that makes them expensive but now with 3D printing what we can do is knock those off in no time at all so I turned to Tinkercad and came up with this. Now that's not my idea it's actually a remix of something I got from Thingiverse and that Thingiverse was the original file. Mm -hmm. Grabbed this it's an 80 millimeter USB powered PC fan and it, it sounds like a jet engine like they all do and I thought that if we use a toroidal pella, a propeller adapted to this we could make a USB powered noiseless desktop cooling fan out of that in a toroidal propeller. And when I was down looking at fans, those kind of fans were £32 each, which struck me as crazy. And this cost me a fiver on Amazon. So let's get printing. Okay, so it's actually only four parts plus our USB uh, powered fan and of course we need to separate the fan out. Now if you've got a 3D printer you've got one of these some snips and you just snip around everything. Obviously try <laughs> your best not to snip the wires otherwise you'll have to get yourself a new fan. Snip it out and then remove this centre section just by snipping close to it. So there are four of them, you snip them off and the fan will drop out. There we go, that's the bit we want. Then we need to remove these blades and the blades are really easy, just snip them again and they'll just fly off. When we've done that, what we get is our Blue Peter previously prepared one and that is the central motor from a PC fan that plugs into a USB and I put an indent in there so that just shoves straight on there. So we can shove that on there now we put a spot of super glue on here and then glue it into that center portion like that so it looks like that. It's got a pretty little cone, the cone glue is on there. That's the fan put together and of course we've got a little base plate there where it goes on there. That's it, 
that's all there is to it. And we've done that, we can plug it in and see if it works. Okay, so I've brought it inside. You'll have to forgive the echo because I'm going to plug it into this USB port. <laughs> That's really working and, and you can hear how quiet it is. I mean, fan noise is one of those things you don't really notice when the fan's on, but when you turn it off, your mind goes, oof. It's, they're very noisy. That is super quiet. And it's about the same size in, that we uh, looked at when we were in the store. And that price was about, well, a fiver and a bit of 3D printing. So that's quite amazing, really. And as I say, the, the noiselessness of them, well, that's obvious. They're supposed to be much more efficient, so they're going to be cheaper to run, which is really cool. You don't need to buy one if you don't want to. They are actually considerably um, simple to make. I've put a couple of cable ties on the wire at the back there just to hold it out of the way and stop me pulling it out of the way. But quite pretty actually, quite beautiful. I'm quite pleased with that. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.